Welcome to my channel. I'm Jess from Handmade by Jess. Today I'm going to show you how to make this easy clothespin sunflower wreath from a wreath form, clothespins, and a sunflower center. Got the 100 pack of clothespins from Walmart. I'm using the 8 inch wreath forms from Dollar Tree. And right there at Craft Outlet, you can order those sunflower centers. They're actually pretty cheap. I ordered a couple of each size uh, a couple years ago, and I'm actually getting around to using them now. So that's awesome. <laughs> Finally found something I wanted to use them on. So right here, what I'm going to do is go ahead and figure out how many clothespins I'm actually going to need to go all the way around this wreath form. I'm going to be painting them yellow. Um, I showed the paints there. I'll show exactly what colors I use there as we go through the process. But what I'm doing is just putting them all on the form, seeing if I like how it looks. And then I'm going to take them all back off, count them. I'll let you know how many I used. And when I paint them, I actually painted a couple extra just in case if I needed them for you know, if the spacing was a little off because I was just trial and error trying to put it on there to get a guesstimate on how many. And there we are. We are at 84. So I painted 86 of them just so I made sure I had enough. I'm using Waverly chalk paint in the color of maize and apple barrels burnt umber. I'm going to mix them together to get a deeper yellow color. I even come back in and I add some of Apple Barrel's Yellow Flame, it's called. Um, I just really like that color right there it is. I like that color. I think it's pretty, especially mixed in with these. I found the right shade that I knew I was going to like for the wreath. Um, I know it looks a little light on camera, but in the final reveal you'll see that it is actually a little darker. Now, personally, I like to paint every single inch of the clothespin, inside, out, in between, where you clip them and everything. Uh, I like to do that because if you look at the wreath from any angle, then you can see that the clothespin is yellow. I like things to look finished. I just, that's just my personal preference. If you just want to paint the fronts, then you go right ahead and do that. That's perfectly up to you. We're going to paint all of these and come back and I'm going to put them on there and we'll get a better idea of how many we're actually going to need. I think I used one of the extra ones that I painted. So I used 85 total, but here I am. I'm taking the clothespins and for the first row of them, I'm taking from the center to the middle ring. The center ring is raised up from the middle and end ring outside ring there. So I'm just pushing the clothespin all the way through the middle ring and the center ring, just like that. And just clipping it on there. And I'm going to go all the way around, just adjusting them. Um, they don't fit perfectly in between the crossbars of the wreath form. So you kind of got to space them just a bit so that they're evenly spaced and you don't really see the crossbar. You want to make sure that the two that are on either side of the crossbar are butted up against each other and then just kind of space them out in between each crossbar there. This is a smaller wreath form. Like I said, it's the eight inch one from Dollar Tree. And it's, these are nice because they're small. And that sunflower center, the, the smaller one, it fit perfectly in the middle of this. And I think it looks really, really nice. Um, so there we're just putting the clothes pins around and then we'll start the outer row of them. And for that one, I just, I didn't even clip the clothespin all the way in on like the first divot of the clothespin because it would have been floppy. So I just put it right there. You can see right before the big hole where the clothespin actually opens up and clips onto something that way it holds tight on that outer ring and sticks out and stands up rather than, you know, gets 
flopping around on there and then those two you can just adjust the spacing on those as you go along it doesn't have to be perfect at this point you can just get them on there because we're going to be flipping it back and forth putting the center on and also putting a hanger on so we're just going to go ahead and put those all the way around the outside edge there sometimes they want to give you a little bit of trouble and they act like they don't want to go on there but uh you'll get them on there it's, it's very very easy to do this project There, I was just fitting that extra one in there. I felt like I needed one more to go around and I'm just checking the spacing, making sure everything looks good. Now, <laughs> this is funny. Uh, I don't know what I was thinking here. Um, I thought, oh yeah, I'll just uh, glue some popsicle sticks on there and we'll get that center to stick right on there. I don't know why I was, I don't, I honestly, I don't know why this is, <laughs> I left it in here because it's funny. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking. I knew it wasn't going to come up from the back and I knew it wasn't going to fit down in there. So instead of taking that whole middle row off, I'm like, you know what? This lays perfectly on here. I'm going to take those popsicle sticks off. Those sunflower centers are made uh, from foam. That's the, what the inside is there. It's foam. So, you know, I have a high temp glue gun there and a high temperature glue gun will actually melt down that styrofoam a little bit and fuse. So that's exactly what I did here with my hot glue. I just ran a bead along inside there, the inside edge where it connected to the clothes pins and the styrofoam on the back of that center there. And then I'm taking some masking tape and I'm just going to use that almost as a oh just to hold it together just for extra security i want to say um i went ahead and did that all the way around and you know just put that on there so that that center was not going to fall out it wasn't going to go anywhere it was nice and stuck on there we don't have to worry about it falling out now we're going to put a hanger on. All I did was take a piece of jute twine, measured it up to where I wanted to put it because I'm going to hot glue it down on the back of that center. And I'm actually going to put some masking tape over that as well to hold it in place. So there we go. We're going to just get that done. And then I'm going to secure the top loop on the back end of you'll see here where I put the glue dots just so that it stays up in its place there and it'll hang and it won't hang out from the wall either or the door wherever you want to hang it. So that's how I put my hanger on there. That way it can't be seen from the back. I think these are really cute. Not being able to be seen, the hanger being seen. I'm going to open up that little pack of bumblebees and I'm going to throw some hot glue on the back of them. I'm only going to use three of them didn't want to overload it i didn't want to you know just go too far with it i thought three was perfect i'm just going to pop a little bit of hot glue on the back of them and get them on there and then we are done that is literally all there is to this project it's awesome very easy if you're like me you love sunflowers in any way shape or form and here we are the finished product so cute so simple i really hope you give it a try and as always i would appreciate it if you would like this video subscribe to my channel and hit that bell for notifications and we'll see you on the next one have a great one